Um, hello everybody and um, welcome to this virtual launch of, of the exhibition um, for Limerick Community Education Network. And um, I suppose where I'd like to start is after looking at the work that everybody's done, and I have a big interest in the self-portrait as a form of art. Um, and I understand how maybe things worked for the last little while, that people were at home and so on, and those are challenging or difficult situations to work with. But you would know none of that when you see the work, and the work is very interesting and exciting. And I suppose the fundamental thing I see in it is everybody individually trying to find their own voice and trying to find a style to express themselves. And that's the beauty of the exhibition, and that's the positive thing about it. Now, I suppose Mary Hughes asked me to open this, and I just think for a minute, I know Mary for, for a long time, and, and conversation, I often talk to Mary about different things in art and art education, and um, that's one of the beauties of, of education in general. You, you, you discuss things with people, and you, le you learn through every experience. And um, looking at the theme of the, the festival now, the, the Lifelong Learning Festival that's coming up, it's very much about looking to the future. And of course, that's the big issue too when you do a project. Where do you go next? And um, I kind of thought that's something I could talk about a little bit because it would just open up the whole area. And I think that's what happens to you yourself when you, you get involved in education and you do a project like that. It increases your awareness of, um, in this case, self-portraiture and portraits and just making art in general. So, um, and I suppose it was Mary asked me because um, I talk a lot about art, I teach art, I write a bit about art, and, um, and I, I've been known to make some self-portraits myself. So, and I just think of um, Van Gogh, and we all, we all know that particular image of him, especially wearing the, the bandage when he, when he it basically, I think he, he did a bit of self-harming, I suppose, is what happened. And, um, but he made a, he made a self-portrait about it. And the particular one I've chosen here is, um, there's, there's actually more going on. There's, there's the fact that he was telling us a bit about sharing or being open and communicating. That's what people love about him, about his own difficulties, the things he was going through. But there's actually a lot more going on in the background of this. He has um, some... Uh, there's a, a Japanese uh, print on the wall, one of these big, and there are two of the big issues in art is influences and references. You know, we know he was interested, he was influenced by Impressionism and so on, but here he was learning, here was another one of the influences, um, Japanese art, and he's referencing it in the background. Personally, when I was, I was very lucky to go to college reasonably young and get on with, a re, a, you know, a good experience of art school, and I love the German expressions. Uh, they were a kind of continuation of what Van Gogh was about. And there's one artist there, uh, Conrad Felix Muller. Uh, and there's a, lovely, um, there's a lovely painting there by him of a, a mother with a child. And what I'm looking at here is what actually artists put in the background of portraits and self-portraits. And I went on myself. Um, you can add... To, to, to do some work myself, and here's another an image I created myself. And as I say to you, and I thought that was one thing people could look at, is this extra layer that you can put behind a person, whether it's a self-portrait or a portrait, an extra layer of meaning and, and, and content that you can put into an image. Um, and I used, to, I used to set a project for students myself. I used to teach portfolio courses for young people trying to go, what interest in go to art school. And it was a particular project I used to run where I would get them to do the self-portrait, get out and do a drawing of the environment, their street, wherever they lived, whatever it was, and bring the two together. And that's an interesting challenge. Um, uh, photography was another area of interest that I had. And um, I came across this amazing photographer. Uh, I just looked, I just checked this image. It's, he took it in 1970. Um, Arthur Freed is his name, and there was a big movement in American photography in the 60s, 70s, um, and he started doing something very unusual, holding the camera out at arm's length and taking pictures of himself, right? And they're fascinating, they're interesting, and he kind of broke new ground in photography. The, the, the self photo was always there, but um, he, 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 he began to take a more intimate self portrait I took a leaf from his book, and 
my self-portrait in the uh, self-portrait collection out in UL, uh, it's it's influenced by that uh, that form of photography, and that was in the days we didn't have the technical equipment that today uh, we have on the mobile phones where you can switch the screen and turn it towards and all that kind of stuff. But um, uh, but when you're when you're searching yourself for some way of expressing yourself, um, you know it's interesting to look at what's what's possible at a given time. So and when I think about it, there's something I would imagine people would want to do: get back into galleries get back to the galleries in Limerick and take the National Self-Portrait Collection out in UL. It's worth visiting, it's worth going through it and looking at all the different approaches of different artists. Another thing you might like to do is simply look, look at artists, look at artists who use self-portraits and, and it's fascinating to see how individual artists, it's fascinating to see sometimes what they had to express, what they want to express. You've got to look at Kathy Cowlitz's image of herself mourning her Someone who died in the First World War. Um, there's a big new documentary on Paula Rigo, and really all of her work is a self-portrait. Um, look at the self-portraits of English artist Maggie Hamlin. A particular favourite of mine is Nan Golden with her famous slideshow called um, The Ballad of Sexual Dependency. You've got to see it. William Kentridge, isn't it? He had a, he had a show in the, in the City Gallery. Um, a few years ago, a major international South African artist who uses the self-portrait and so on. And Mary said to me to mention my own wife, Valerie, who is a, a fabric artist here in Limerick. I'm not sure, is it fabric or textile artist is the correct term, but um, she, she uses embroidery and that's one of her images. Um, strangely doing this talk, there's a lot of art in my family and my son makes a, a type of art that's very different very imaginative and I just realized the correct term for what he does is it's magic it's an example of magic realism a mixture of reality and, mag and imagination so really self-portraits can go in all sorts of directions and and every artist as I said in the beginning will discover their own language I work in the prisons I work in prison art and it's fascinating the role that prison art that art plays in the lives of prisoners, as they, those of them that buy into education and want to change their lives, often art is a way of kind of finding a whole new direction for themselves. And uh, the famous saying of Eddie Cal, whose name you might rec recognise, and who is regarded as the greatest artist in the last few decades who came out of the, the prison system, he said he painted his way out of prison. So he changed his life from a life of crime to a life of art. And um, and his work is, is, is terrific. And in the prisons, you'll see mosaics, just like uh, was being produced on this, in, uh, and are included in this exhibition, and pyrography. And there's a, an unusual pyrography image that a man made from the scan of a child that unfortunately he and his wife had lost. I'm, I'm dealing with another man who is a, a former prisoner, and um, his approach to the, the, the self-portrait is fascinating. Um, and he's using that particular type of image to kind of, to, to sort of relive some of his past, put it behind him and move forward. Um, I found out he, 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 he tends for bonsai trees. And I'm, I'm, I'm kind of saying to him, look, maybe that's, that's something to go on a set of portrait. And I'm just going to finish on this one note. I do think this is called, it's not just called a lifelong learning festival, but it's about Limerick. And as, as we see, Maybe institutions opening up over the next few weeks and months. Uh, I, I went to the City Gallery last week when it reopened and um, it's such a great feeling to get back into places and to be able to see works of art again. And that's part of the whole process of learning, looking at artists' work. And there's a, a fantastic drawing up there at the moment by the Irish painter Nick Miller. And it's, it's from what he calls his truckscapes, where he has a truck that he drives around the country and, and he, he throws up the back of the truck and he paints straight out on the landscape. And I was just reading up a bit about him and it's, he, it's very clear he works direct from things in front of him, from nature. And he, he's described as having a reinvigorated painting in Ireland recently and that his art is described as encounter art. He really wants to encounter, whether it is the landscape, a still life, a portrait, a person in front of him, and have a look at these images of his work and 
discover Irish artists who are really, you will get something from. And that's the entire process of education, is um, looking at what you've done yourself, looking for influences and references, learning different techniques, learning just different ways of putting images together, trying them, see if they work for you. And you move forward in that way, into a, and you, you build one on top of the next, and you break new ground, and then sometimes you're really happy. You know, you can have your little failures, and th that's part of the process, but you will break new ground, and you will do something that you're, and you feel you've pushed out your own parameters and your own boundaries, and you'll feel, you'll feel a sense of achievement, because uh, you know, you'll feel you, you have moved forward with what you're doing. So it's trial and error, yes, that's the nature of art, but, um, but that's, that's what works, and that's what helps you to move forward. So look, let's hope for a good year in, uh, from September, I suppose it is, with courses opening up again and getting back with teachers and, and, and while the technology works up to a point, there's nothing to beat getting into a room where you can have those discussions, do that work and, and enjoy the whole interaction with, with classmates and with teachers and so on. And uh, so well done for, the, for that project that's just come together and the best of luck with signing up for courses and doing things in the year ahead. Take care.